So, Professor, to begin at the beginning of a life in mathematics in childhood, where was the first real influence? Uh, was it in the family? Was it a book, a teacher? What got you started in your interest? Uh, actually, it was my elder brother, who was seven years older than me. He, he, he became interested in mathematics. I don't know why. Yeah, that. And he studied on also special mathematical classes, which exists in Russia. And, uh, and I also studied in high school for three years. Mm, uh, and uh, I was became interested in around age 10, I suppose. You were 10. How old was he? He was 17. He was 17. So there was quite a gap. Yes, yes. What made him think that this 10-year-old could have any interest in this subject? No, no. He just asked me some question. Uh, actually, this question maybe you can even answer is <laughs> what are two numbers uh, whose sum is 100 and the difference is 10? Huh. Do you know the answer? I'm not going to answer your question. Yeah. But yeah. you did. Is yeah, it, it, took me, it took me two days uh, to figure out eventually the answer. Yeah, <laughs> of course, now <laughs> it's one second here. Yeah, How many children in the house? Uh, just two. Just the two of you? Yeah. Um, is it a, a scholarly house? Is it a yeah, kind of, yeah, because um, my father is a uh, specialist in medieval Korean language and history, mm -hmm. and my mother, um, she's uh, retired now, uh, she was an engineer in, in Himki, a suburb of Moscow, when rockets, engines are hmm. made, yeah, so. Uh, would it be fair to say that she was the one who more broadly influenced an interest in Technology or not science? Really, not really. No, I, uh, I think actually there was also a good journal for uh, middle and high school students called Quant. It was very good, uh -huh. uh, and it still exists, but not the same glorious uh, since his glorious past. It started in seventy. Uh, it was what's monthly journal, and this was really a huge subscription. Got something about several hundred, hundred thousand people subscribe to the journal. Yeah, is it fair to call this a privileged household? And I mean, mostly in terms of access to education and mm -hmm. the best schools and so forth. Uh, uh, yeah, there was Olympiads, and uh, yeah, in fact, my personal history was uh, there was also books, uh, kind of popular mathematics books, and especially like Martin Gardner books, the uh, translation of about maybe 10 books mm. alto altogether, but also a lot of Russian books. Mm. And uh, when I was 10, yeah, I kind of my interest in mathematics uh, started, and uh, I think I kind of started to learn very, very quickly. And there was some uh, uh, school level Olympiad, and I solved problems for my class, for next class. It might was first class, fifth, sixth, sixth, sixth mm. seventh, and up, I went up to eight, and then just as the time was up, yeah. So there's no. Describe the Olympia because I really am interested in the structure of, yeah. of Soviet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this Olympia on a school level, and then on city level, on, 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 up to international finally, and I. I actually, I was selected when I was in the last year in school to to be member of international team, but. It was 1980, mm -hmm. and it was uh, and it was kind of bad luck. It was coincidence. It was another Olympiad in Moscow, sports Olympiad, which was boycotted because of Afghanistan. Oh yes. Yeah, but somehow the authorities decided that too uh, uh, too much two Olympiads for one city at the same time. Oh. Yeah, so they cancelled this Olympiad, <laughs> uh, uh, and um, but anyhow. How much? Um I don't know that a 10-year-old or even maybe we've gotten you to 12 or something, but it thinks about the future in these terms. Are you mostly consumed by f the fun and curiosity of mathematics? What? Yeah, no, I just fell in love in mathematics and it was, I think it from age of 14 I already knew that I would be a mathematician. Ah, yes. and you were required by then to begin to commit to a kind of study. Not, not, a rec yeah, the story was the following. Uh, uh, there is a system of special kind of classes uh, which started in the 60s, I suppose. Okay. Mm. Mm, yeah, by Kolmogorov and uh, Gelfand, maybe. I, I, I don't really know much history. 
Uh, and uh, in Moscow there was something like seven, maybe seven, seven different schools when you, there are special classes when you have additional hours for deeper study of mathematics. Ah. And the classes were given by, not by school professors, not school teachers, but ah. by, uh, originally by some f- f- well-known mathematicians, but maybe first few, few years, but then the system started to produce uh, their own teachers. Yeah, so kind of people who went to the school became students in university, became teachers in oh, yes. in the school. So I was I was taught by uh, people of the same uh, kind of classmates of my brother, I have to say. Yes. But in different school, but doesn't. Yeah. What is your brother doing while you are progressing in your own way? Yeah, uh, yeah. My brother went to uh, not to mathematics but to um, Institute of um, Electronics, I have to say, uh, and. Then he um, became a specialist and uh, he started to work on artificial intelligence a very long time ago. Mm. And then more to um, uh, mod- modeling of vision and, and he went many, many years to the West. He, he was in San Francisco in I Research Institute, but several years ago he left, he has his own startups, and so he's huh. on his own, yeah. So he was, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, more involved in the practical applications mm. of theory is that not really no 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 l- later yes yeah later but, yeah yeah but initially not initially yeah. so you're both in a way theoretical yeah uh, and at some point we were we worked in the same institute in, in Moscow in different labs Institute for problem for information transmission okay so let's progress yeah. through the system uh, you've had the special classes taught by People not much older than you. Yeah, seven years old. <laughs> yeah, seven years older. Yeah. And uh, at what point do you make or is made for you a university decision? Mm, yeah, it's yeah, but uh, and, uh, no. To, to go to Moscow University, it was uh, the best way to enter mathematics at my yes. time. Uh, yeah, yeah, in fact, it, uh, uh, already when my brother, uh, my brother. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Also applied to Moscow University, uh, but he was rejected. Ah. Uh, yeah, it was beginning of this anti-Semitic yes. whatever stuff. Yeah, and they mixed up our family name with Jewish name, which is our name is Polish name. <laughs> also, we have Jewish grandmother. But you you faced anti-Semitism though you were not Jewish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's, it's kind of uh, no. My grandmother is one of my grandmothers is Jewish, but but that would not be enough to. But but it's but name come from in other directions. Yeah. It's from Polish. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, but, but still, it affected. Him. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit. Uh, but it didn't affect your possibility. Uh, yeah, because uh, I was member of uh, international team, and uh, that was the way to get without exams to Moscow University. Ah. Uh, yeah. Also, Olympiad was cancelled, uh, so it was no team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to pass exam, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a very, very strange year because usually in uh, in Mechmat, in mathematics department, Moscow University, at, at my time there was something like seven or five people for one place, uh, um, candidates for one place, and uh, and this special year, in 1980, uh, exams in all different places were held at the sa- exactly the same day, so people were not able to. Uh, just fail one place and try another oh, place, yes. and uh, and it was a point ninety five person per place. Yeah, so it was really no <laughs> concourse, and also I think um, Kolmogorov, who was uh, uh, not advisor but kind of advisor of advisor of my of teachers in my school, yes. he, he he kind of put some pressure maybe on committee. I don't know. Huh. But, yeah, but event event and I didn't suffer any troubles at all. Yeah. So, what age are you now? Uh, it's, it's called subtraction in mathematics. Uh, yeah, so, I was born in 64. I will, I will be soon uh, 54. No, no, not age now. Age ah, at the time. Ah, because I think I, 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 age when I went to university, I, I skipped one class because of my success on yes. Olympiad. I was, I was one year younger. And uh, I, I was essentially 14, I suppose. Well, yeah. and this is unusual, I would guess. 15, 15, 15 yeah, maybe, yeah, 15. Yeah, yes. it was unusual. Yeah, it was kind of year or oh, two less than usual, yeah. I'm now at this stage of your life going to ask a question I will probably come back to in another form later, and that is 
how are the problems chosen for you or by you that are testing um, your abilities? I mean, I, 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 I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know how the particular set of problems or fields within mathematics begin to interest a mathematician. Know. It's no, no for me it's basic it's kind of lifelong journey yes. through from one field to another and uh, back yeah so I, I really uh, don't belong to any specific field of mathematics I so you are you are having problems presented to you in in these contexts and you are intrigued by them and you just yeah yeah no for me mathematics it's kind of game of analogy analogous, yeah, I have to say, so okay. uh, when I grow old, I kind of have more and more experience and uh, it's kind of most part of the time I'm even discussing, like, oh, I, I saw something similar in completely different context and maybe... It's so it's, of, again, the way the curiosity yes, yes, yeah. is informed. Um, in the university, you've achieved entrance into the, the great university for yeah. mathematics. Um, what is the program? Is it a question of choosing um, certain classes? Are they chosen for you? How does this... Oh, no, no it, for me it was kind of different. Uh, there were some kind of regular courses like analysis, geometry, differential geometry and so on. But uh, in fact, uh, every subject I knew kind of already in, ad in advance and they already taught yes. us. So I almost never attended regular classes at all. Okay. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And but uh, there were some kind of subjects which are not mathematical, I, I, but it took little time. And mostly I went to attend some special seminars, well, about hundred seminars uh, every week. Huh. Yeah, and, and uh, so I grew up on Gelfand seminar and became student of Gelfand. Of course, we need to stop and talk about him because yeah. he was profoundly important in your development. Yeah. Can you characterize his reputation and interest at the time you you, you met him and became his student? Yeah, I know. He was already a mythical figure. Yes. And, yeah. and he kind of uh, supervised men and, uh, and uh, kind of really something superhuman in sense. And he's, uh, I would say, um, uh, yeah, physically he's very small, was a very small person and I think it looks like for me that his brain was smaller size than normal. <laughs> this his head was not so big, yeah. But he, yeah, but was, he's extremely sharp. And um, actually, I was first time introduced him when, when I was in the last year in high school ah. by some body who who worked for this journal Quant, and uh, mm. and he yeah, somehow through family relations, he eventually some his wife or whatever was uh, a friend of colleague of my father, and yeah, so, so he, uh, uh, I was known because I was also winner of uh, Soviet in the Soviet Olympiads, and yeah, so he, uh, this guy uh, uh, took, introduced me to Gelfand once I went to yes. Moscow, and yeah, so I didn't understood much at the time, but this first time we met, and um, then when I became a student, I was regular on his seminar. Did you seek him? Yes, yes. Or did he seek you? No, no, no. We introduced, we just talked uh, for two minutes. Yeah. Myself. No, initially, but initially. now you were in the university. In the university, I, I, yeah, I was kind of in a group of young students, and he, 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 it was clear that these are students, these are professors, and so on. And, and he said, he used to say that my seminar is for um, um, uh, kind of uh, good, uh, good, uh, what was? For good student, excellent uh, graduate student, and uh, uh, fantastic professor, something like that. Yes, yeah. So that was all games like this. And uh, uh, he usually uses young students to check whether they follow uh, the speaker. Yeah, the, the seminar was uh, some kind of piece of theater. Uh, it started uh -huh. very late, about seven. If I remember correctly, and lasted almost till sometimes till midnight. Huh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there was some. Nobody knew what will be next seminar. There was no announcement, no formal announcement, and there will be some secretly arranged speakers, which, which 
sometimes they thought so they will give uh, some talk, but they were not able to start at the end of oh. the day. <laughs> yeah, so there was, uh, yeah, there was some kind of, uh, usually he start to, uh, Gilfan starts with some jokes and some kind of stories, and maybe repeating what they uh, discussed the week before, and uh, usually sometimes he asked me or some other young student to explain uh, something yes huh. yeah so it was was it in the spirit of a challenge or a kind of soft oh, oh do, do oh do we understand what is going on do you understand and so on uh, yeah just it's kind of reproduce uh, uh, rephrase what it is okay so i'm just guessing that you're you're turning out to be already a pretty good mathematician he sees your potential is it necessary for him then to recommend you to another stage is was that the way one progressed was there a thesis to do oh yeah yeah, it's, yeah and in fact our relations were not so mm, good I have to say ah. yeah yeah I, I, um, for me he was uh, he, he's actually was a very dominating person and uh, and uh, I cherished my freedom <laughs> I have to say yes yeah. and I, I tried to keep distance yeah I subscribed with his student but we talked not we talked several times for, for many hours but Mm, uh, altogether not too much I have to say and um, mm, so you were in a way protecting your own development yes yes yeah yeah and uh, in fact this is, this is, when I was his student it was some kind of structure organized kind of spontaneously uh, his older student uh, uh, to all the students uh, um, one of them is Alexander Goncharov he, he, he's to come, he will come here next week. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a bit older than me, uh, and um, uh, and some, some other people are uh, were giving kind of after Gelfand seminar kind of explanation for younger students, which which is again two three oh. younger guys. Uh, I was young, young, yeah. So it was kind of some layer in between. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense, I was more students of Goncharov than Gelfand. I have to yes, say. Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you required to do a thesis to complete your university education? Mm, uh, no, after university, I, no, it's not thesis. It's not go to graduate school and. Um, I, uh, yeah, in grade school one can make in different forms to be full-time or kind of part-time and uh, I took position in Institute for Problems for Formation, uh, of Formation Transmission. Uh, it's a very good institute in Moscow, it's a very wide uh, spectrum of uh, science involved. Yes. Uh, and uh, I was in a small group doing uh, coding theory maybe and some kind of discrete mathematics and, and probability theory. Uh, my brother was an, uh, originally started in kind of artificial intelligence group and then switched to biology. Yes. Um, uh, biophysiology and uh, uh, also a little bit of nepotism, but it's, uh, the son of Gelfand, uh, Sergei Gelfand, was also in the same lab. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's. Uh, um, now I'm going to ask. Because we're in the 80s yeah. now, maybe the late, eight, middle 80s? Yes, yes, I finished university in 85, yeah, I was 20, yeah. Okay, so I want to put you in the world. It's, yeah. it's a crazy time in the Soviet Union, in, uh, politically. Yeah, begin, beginning of crazy time. Beginning of crazy yeah, time. Yes, yes. But the next few years will be yeah. Yeah. determinant in your life. So how is the political situation yeah. affecting you as a young mathematician? Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, uh, actually, at that time, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I can say the following. When I finished university, I, I, I actually have a group of friends in artistic circles, and I was very much involved in some playing some chamber music. Yes. Uh, so it was uh, my. Uh, I spent really. You played the cello. I played cello. Yeah, yes. yeah, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, and when I started to work, so to, so to say, in this institute, uh, it, I was given essentially complete freedom. Uh, uh, there was a seminar on Tuesday at two yes. o'clock. But there's only one room for many people, and there's really not enough. <laughs> if you go, every every appear, it will be impossible to work. So, I have to attend the seminar and maybe write some 
article, one article. So you had yeah. a lot of time on your own. Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, some my artistic friends, I found this cello uh, teacher, hmm. and she lived just a few hundred meters from, from this institute. Yeah, so it was very convenient for me to yes. uh, go there to have time to see her. But yeah, I sent. I was kind of thinking and about mathematics and other stuff and uh, about political developments when Gon uh, yeah it's uh, Gorbachev came a little later I think at the time those uh, two short uh, general uh, secretary Chernenko and Andropov each lasted a year or two yeah so and then uh, when Gorbachev started it's uh, he kind of thought it's ne uh, this st step is the last step it's they cannot go yes. more. yeah so it was and we didn't really look forward to uh, development. And I've talked to some of your colleagues yeah. who grew up in the Soviet Union, maybe a little earlier and yeah. so forth, and even the options about whether they could interact with foreign colleagues or uh, pursue um, their studies abroad were subject to decision-making outside their own, their own world. By this time, mm -hmm. can you pretty much expect to shape your own career and go where you want? Not really, no, no, I thought to, to stay in this place, it was a very comfortable place to work and um, I already this some contacts with foreign mathematicians start to bloom, yeah, I, I remember this, Witten came and yeah. or Graham Siegel or Michael Tia, yeah, so we have a lot of uh, visitors from outside world. Yes. And then in 88, um, uh, became, yeah, uh, uh, kind of um, chief of my lab says that it's, oh, we can now send you, to, you can maybe can go to abroad and uh, I had some invitation to go to France, to Marseille for one month in December. It wasn't bombed first. Sir? It wasn't Bonn first that were your invitation game. I thought your first time that you went abroad, you went to Bonn, but but mm, no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. But before I should go to some socialist country, so some kind okay. of rule which still to be obeyed. Okay. And it was uh, and it was some good conference in Warsaw uh, in in May June. I remember I went to this conference and then in December, in November, December, I went to France, to Marseille, and also spent one week here mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at HS, yeah, yes. it, it was completely blocked because there was some super strike, there was no transportation, it, it was only military buses, I think, connected, Bureau of <laughs> Paris, yes, it's, uh, right now it's... So, the uh, political situation affected you even in the West, <laughs> a different political situation. Yeah, but, yeah. So, now... Uh, but, the, yeah, but then I... Um, uh, what was it? I, I, I got an invitation to go to Max Planck in. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's what I remembered. Yes. Yes, it was which year? Uh, maybe ninety. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, in in the uh, spring of ninety uh, for three months. Uh, uh, ah, actually, I should explain something. Mm. Yes. Please. Uh, you asked me about my thesis, yeah, and uh, yeah, when I finished university. Uh, maybe a year after, I, I, um, I saw on a, uh, when I visited Gelfand and I saw on his desk some short uh, article of Yuri Manian about something, two pages. Yeah, it was uh, a special format for journal functional analysis, very short, kind of two, three pages mm. uh, kind of research analysis, but sometimes with complete proofs and at least one can follow what is going on. And it was bizarre formal and I uh, thought about it and uh, then came this idea uh, it works and published this idea but I was um, I was first to publish this idea but the idea was somehow in the air. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, some beginning of conformal field theory and um, maybe ten different groups discovered the same thing yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was just first to publish and um, there was a, a really great mathematician uh, about maybe six, seven years older than me, this is Alexander Bellinson from Chicago. Uh, uh, he made many contributions uh, already at that time, but uh, he also discovered the same thing. <laughs> uh, 
is, my, is, is this exactly the same, yeah. Huh. yeah. It was just in the air, it was something which came from interaction and kind of conform field theory, mathematics and physics. So new. does that mean you published at the same time or you wound up publishing together? No, 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 no. He, he, he published it maybe half a year later and much longer article, yeah. I see. I, I published again two pages <laughs> uh, stuff, yeah, two page short. Uh, again, as you educate me in the mathematical traditions, yeah. um, once you publish the, an insight or a solution yeah. of this sort, or at least an approach, yeah. um, your name then becomes associated with it. I mean, this point you. No, no, no. It's not, no. It's, just, it's sometimes name is associated, but this is was kind of um, relation of two well-known construction. Yeah, yeah. So it's no, no need for extra name tag in, in this situation. Mm. But there's a there's a point where you and it seems to me every great mathematician becomes noticed in a, in a wider yeah no i think discussion. some people not some people notice this uh, uh, article yeah and i thought to uh, this to be topic of my uh, thesis okay but unfortunately for me this sasha belenson decided to write his thesis exactly on the same topic and yeah, yeah so yeah so so yeah, that wasn't going to be your thesis uh, yeah so it is not good to have just two things about so what what and, did you and, and i kind of hibernated for several years i just did you yeah 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 for yeah, essentially for five years after university i, I didn't i maybe published only this small really? stuff yeah yeah so I, I was thinking about some other Think and but it I got noticed and uh, that I think I was invited to Max Planck because of this my still the small paper the small paper which was kind of yeah you know, a big big problem but yeah, small paper yeah, yeah. Um, kept your name yeah, somebody, interesting yeah somebody yeah, got interested in, in inviting okay me, yeah. so after the hibernation which is a wonderful description yeah. of this time yeah um, you are invited then to Max Planck, yeah, and spent Planck. three months there, so it was a great time. And and then at the end it was a kind of a really event which kind of changed my career. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, there was uh, this, um, this is a tradition Max Planck every year, now it's every second year, was Arbeits, to have Arbeitstagung in June. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some kind of European gathering of mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Without any formal program, and uh, maybe first few talks I decided uh, uh, in advance, but the rest are by voting or some proposing, just people coming and proposing what a new result and whom uh, people propose it, not him themselves, but somebody else to explain some new yeah. striking result. And for many years, uh, the kind of the person who gave the first lecture, kind of uh, fixed in advance, was Sir Michael Atier. And he gave a, a talk about a conjecture which he uh, Witten, uh, hmm. came with uh, and explained to him. And uh, then he, uh, I was so struck by this conjecture, so I worked on the evening and got idea how to approach it to make it not so outlandish and. Uh, it was an outlandish conjecture. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What again? I know you're speaking to a layman, but yeah. what seems so surprising about it? Ah, point? yeah, no, it was about the things called algebraic curves. Uh, they have invariant genus, like number of because the complex numbers are surfaces, number mm -hmm. of handles, and for each genus, they depends on genus G depends on three G minus C parameter to get some space, and then you can make a lot of integrals, natural integrals of the space to get. Generate organize in some coefficients of some series in infinitely many variables. Hmm. Great, and then it turns out to be a solution of um, Cartier-Weil Free equation, which is shallow wave equation. Why on the on the earth it should be? Yeah, it's, it's so it wasn't necessarily preposterous, but it absolutely was, preposterous. It was preposterous. Yeah, okay. yeah. but you thought yeah. it it must be tested. You had to think more about this. Yes, yes, and yeah, and. Uh, this is some traditional some boat trip in some somewhere in the middle of the Sarbaitstagon. It was actually my last week in in, in Germany, yes. and during the boat trip I had to explain to it uh, this idea of this thing, and uh, got the press, and then I got an invitation for what, spent one year, and so on, so on, and then uh, in order to pursue this, just in general, they were impressed. Yeah, and, and yeah, and, and in the meantime I solved the conjecture completely. In, in the meantime, yeah, and, yeah. you solved it. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So now maybe again people are noticing you yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, and it was, it, was, it was something Ron told us that I didn't publish anything. It was something which I still published when uh -huh. I visited France uh, in '88. Yeah. I published something which I discovered a year before. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a, gr a great period in Moscow, this, this interaction of mathematics and physics, and especially conformal field theory. It was a subject which was, uh, in some aspect, in some kind of one of this form was born essential in my own eyes. Yes. Uh, it was this beloved Polyakov and Balochikov, there are uh, three great Moscow physicists who discovered the subject which is give, uh, can, can consider like origin of string theory. Yes. And but they discovered to speak, uh, uh, speak with mathematicians from Gelfand Seminar who. Uh, Again, Fuchs, he calculated characters of some Virasor algebra and, mm -hmm. and then there are this relation to statistical physics. And yeah, so it was a very exciting period. And um, yeah, all actually my first paper was related to this stuff. Um, uh, but uh, and also Bellinson talked about this uh, thing and uh, there were some structures. And uh, uh, in, in the lab, in Institute for Probable Information Transmission, the, the chief of the lab was great um, probabilist Roland Abruzzo, he's dead now, he's no longer alive here, but uh, he invented some notion of Gibbs field, which kind of I understand, uh, understood it, the importance of this notion, and, uh, and, tried to, and I tried to see how to make relations sync with topology, so the things uh, which kind of idea, associated with the name of idea of it and this topological field theory, but I kind of came to the same ideas, I have to yes. say. And uh, it was a definition of conformal field theory. And Graham Siegel came to Moscow. We discussed, we have just the same definition. Yeah, so it was uh, something. Uh, How old are you at uh, this uh, point? Maybe 20, 22, 23, yeah. 22, 23. Yeah, and, and then um, as there was some uh, discovery uh, of uh, Richard in, in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. Uh, Rishitikin uh, to arrive invariance, which also John's polynomials, they're all related. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, John's, uh, John's invariance uh, uh, also, was also a great discovery at the time in, in, in topology, uh, kind of algebra topology. And I, I saw kind of relation with this conformal field theory and, uh, and uh, discovered something, but uh, which was uh, Maybe a year before Witten discovered this, his make his discovery about yes, yes. relation of John's polynomials, we in Moscow for, uh, uh, almost discovered it from various uh, stuff. Besides, um, I found some uh, formal structure, uh, but uh, uh, the relation with past integrals were kind of known to Polikov, I think, and I remember there was also another mathematician who became physicist, Albert Schwartz. He gave a talk in Gelfand seminar, very short talk, he says it. I know uh, how to construct invariant three-dimensional manifold. You take compactly group, you take integer number, you take integral of some chance and section. It should be invariant of manifold, but uh, he said, but I have no idea how to calculate it. Hmm. But it should be invariant. And there was some break, and uh, because it's too long seminar, sure. there was some little, uh, maybe half an hour break. And during the break, I, I told him, I also know how to construct invariant three-dimensional manifold. To start with some rational conformal field theory, do something, and we just talk, and uh, we didn't realize that it's just two sides of the same yeah. uh, story. And Witten discovered it's wonderfully. Uh, yeah. So there's a, a general topic that you alluded to. I want to spend a bit time on, and that is the relationship between mathematics and theoretical physics in terms of the kinds of conversations that historically did or did not happen, because yeah. I know you are very central to those discussions yeah. now. Yeah, actually, no, I think it's less. Uh, yeah, less. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm more mathematician. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, uh, bit, I'm losing track now what's going on in physics. Uh, I have to say that. Uh, but maybe at the age we are locating, yeah. in 22, 23, you're, you're interested. Yes, yes, yeah, uh, a lot of uh, kind of, uh, uh, things going together, like people... Is it, is it uncharacteristic for theoretical physicists and mathematicians to exchange? 
Ja, it's, uh, it's actually in different places. It's, it's different. Yeah, he, like here in, in Borowiecki seminar in period of Jean Pierre Serre, uh, I think no talk about physics was allowed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, so, it, uh, yeah, so it, uh, some people went to uh, adventures with mathematical physics, but he, uh, he in France was a very strong uh, kind of around Bourbaki community, which uh, didn't really. So, in a short interview, I've got to get you a professorship somewhere, and I've got to get you a Fields Medal. Yeah. So, how do we get there? Yeah, yeah. So I was in Max Planck, and. Uh, it's, uh, I went for one year, but uh, when I left, kind of um, deputy director of my institute said, uh, I understand we are, you are living forever, yeah, so it, mm. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah, because they prolonged my stay for maybe three years, yeah, I spent altogether four years there, and with some also visit to Princeton, to Institute for Advanced Study and uh, other places. Um, but then uh, also I was married at the time, and um, mm -hmm. And then in '94, uh, it was kind of time to settle. No, no, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, and I had my PhD eventually yeah. at Germany uh, for the solution of Witten conjecture. Uh, but then uh, mm, it was time to settle, and I had at the time two offers from mm, Princeton and Berkeley. And I chose Berkeley because my brother at that time moved to San Francisco. Uh, ah, yes, of course. I wanted yes. to a bit closer to family, in a sense. Uh, and I spent uh, maybe nine months at Berkeley. <laughs> Which is probably the shortest in history, because yeah, it most does, people from I talk to yearn to go to Berkeley. You only spent nine months there. Yeah, it, I was started in September and I left in spring, I suppose. Why? Yeah. Ah, because it, uh, uh, I got offer to, to HS, <laughs> to go to HS, and I took it kind of without thinking, I have to say. How, how important, and this is just a human question yeah. for anyone, is the location where you are winding up? Is it mostly a decision based on the intellectual opportunities, or is it, oh, I want to live such a place? How do you make these things? Yeah, no, no. First, I've, I've been there in 88. Yes. Yeah, so the place, but also the place is absolutely. Uh, Fantastic uh, kind of his history and uh, reputation in mathematics because of Grotendieck, it's uh, something, uh, and uh, other people, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I replaced Dennis Sullivan, I suppose, here. I see, yeah, I so, see. And so it's still mostly a professional decision. It's a professional decision, yeah, but also uh, I, I, found, I was kind of unhappy in Berkeley, I have to say. Well, I, okay. I, I don't know why. This, during these nine months, I didn't really wrote any. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah I, th I think. I think. there was some kind of not really wasted time. I gave graded course on deformation theory, which was uh, source of many things afterwards. But uh, what were you offered uh, to come here? Uh, yeah. What, what What was the aside from the unhappiness that you may have had there? Yeah. Uh, what were the conditions as as an as a mathematician that yeah, no, no. This thinking. place, it's uh, kind of uh, like Institute for Advanced Study. It offers complete freedom, and yeah, okay. yeah, and I don't burden with uh, giving courses. Of course, I can give courses if I like, yeah, but uh, but, but you uh, don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and and uh, that yeah. was important. Uh, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's, it's uh, here. It's kind of I feel kind of like I do what I was born for. I kind of do mathematics, not right. Yeah. Uh, Again, as I, I learn more and more about the math, mathematical life, yeah. uh, for some it's critical to have students around. That's how they progress in their own um, thinking. For others, uh, sure, yeah, the more time they have just to speculate. Yeah, I don't have to head. say that I have a lot of time, uh, even enough time to specul speculate because there are many, many visitors who come anyway. to work with me, and so so through. Sometimes I'm dreaming to give up and maybe follow, like Grotendieck, I went to institute only once a week, so maybe it was a little bit of a wise idea, just, I don't know. But the moment so I, I uh, earlier said that I wanted to get you awarded a Fields Medal. Um, what was the insight that was 
principally responsible for your being awarded? In fact, it's not one. I think oh. they said something like four different okay. <laughs> things. Okay, please, yes, yeah. please. But, uh, let's remember what was it. Yeah, I think one is this uh, solution of Witten conjecture, but further stuff. Yeah, ah, I think uh, this there was something about not invariance, which uh, appeared in early 90s, and then there was uh, what for? I can't remember. Ah, there was another uh, stuff which I've done essentially maybe a year before I got to Fields Medal. Uh, it, it, Ah, ah, yes, it was um, deformation quantization, um, some kind of uh, series of, of more, and more co some of more, and more complicated formulas which I can't really write, one can only draw them it's by graphs. Mm -hmm. And and, ah, and the third stuff was, I think, mirror symmetry, which is in uh, in '94. I gave a, I was invited as a plenary speaker in international congress uh, in in Zurich. Hmm. And um, and I propose a program, this homological mirror symmetry, which was uh, at, at the moment was kind of based on almost no evidence, just mm -hmm. some mathematical well. beauty. I thought it was a bit kind of reckless uh, decision because this, I propose uh, the way to ex to explain mysteries which come from some physicist physicist predictions through some kind of beauty beautiful mathematical. Relations and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a subject which kind of really, it's I think it's uh, for, for me it's, it's the main um, thing which I've done in my life. This mirror symmetry, it's uh, it's it's kind of re remarkable relation between algebra and, uh, and new relation between algebra and geometry. And uh, when it started, uh, very few. I think essentially nobody uh, was able to follow it, <laughs> yeah, because it's, it was needed to to be uh, fluent in completely different uh, areas in symplectic topology and in abstract homological algebra, mm -hmm. and uh, there's not many people, uh, no, just nobody, uh, and uh, but then new generation, yeah, and, and the older generation they never catch up. I have to say, it's, 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 okay. yeah, 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 so it's it's kind of we have to wait to, to till new generation. <laughs> really educated, really. Indeed. But it's not only youth, it's, uh, of course, intelligence, it goes without saying, but it's not only youth, it seems to be a, a habit of risk taking yeah. in terms of the, the challenge you t because I suppose a lot is at stake yeah. if you go down a blind alley. Yeah. Uh, unless you, you can tell me that mathematics is tolerant. Yeah. of uh, massive failure. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but in my case, it it, yeah, it was pretty reckless, I have to say. It because, was reckless, yes. Yeah, 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 because uh, uh, yeah, just, just it was driven by the beauty of potential explanation of uh, yes. this. Thing. And it's an internal drive. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. it's not even inevitably a good career move, yeah, but yeah. it's what you need to discover or, yeah, or yeah. to solve yeah. or to yeah. probe. Yeah. Um, so at the age of 54, have you, do you continue to have this habit of searching for the preposterous? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, yeah. Just, yeah, there is a project which I continue already for maybe four, four years. Yes. Uh, it's also was kind of has base in uh, string theory. It's, it's all related to cosmological mirror symmetry. But it's kind of next uh, kind of quantum leap. It's really to go to hard analysis in algebra. <laughs> you yes. don't want to, uh, to expect it to do so. Um, yeah. And so this is what intrigues you. This yes, yeah. The the theoretically unsolvable that you. Not, not, yeah, it's. Um, I mean. Yeah, all the relations which. Um, yeah, between some kind of algebraic axiomatics and uh, analytic tools, which I don't know much, I have to say. Uh, 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 that, uh, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of interviewing in this series both computer scientists, some of them quite theoretical, but computer yeah. scientists and mathematicians. And the computer scientists seem, just by impression, to be building on each other as though on each other's shoulders, getting to a future 
task, solution, so forth. Whereas mathematicians seem to me, and this is really said more for a reaction as to whether I'm right, seem to operate almost out of time and space. They're, they're having a, a conversation, not necessarily with any expectation of particular results. Um, they may be having a conversation with people 300 years ago, as well as... Yeah. Yeah, is this a fair yeah, characterization? Yeah, no, mathematics, yeah, in a sense, uh, um, kind of intrinsically, we also uh, speak with Gauss earlier, yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, so it's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there are some kind of constant structures in a sense, yeah, um, which. Uh, yeah, also Gilfant uh, uh, talked uh, a lot. What Gauss will say on such and such yes. things, yeah, yeah. For example, people say we know what a cohomology, but of course, people hundred whatever two hundred years ago they uh, they kind of do, don't know the name, don't know the structure, but they feel <laughs> they have all the right feelings. Yes, it's yeah. It's, but somebody hundreds of years ago has something to say to you. Yeah, yeah. In your field. Yeah, but this. Mm, no, but what I do, it's really modern. I, I, I really read, read very few uh, literature right now because uh, uh, it's uh, what I do it has, in the moment, almost no relation to the past, I have to say. But this is particularly true of how you are asking questions, or is mm -hmm. this broadly true. I mean, I, c I could have gotten it's back... Some, it's, it depends, yeah. Sometimes there are questions which should be have asked uh, more than 100 years ago, but don't ask yet. And, yeah, so. But you're not, you're not intrigued by those questions? You're... you're, you're uh, not really, yeah. No, no, no some... Mm, yeah, there are these things like Hilbert pro pro problems, yeah, this kind of... Uh, for me, it's kind of like more stale questions. Yeah, or Riemann hypothesis. Yeah, still, yeah, people dream about Riemann hypothesis. Yes. Of course, it's a great question, it's a great mystery. But uh, for me, it looks it's one of many. <laughs> I have to say, it's not. Yeah. I, again, I, I may be not putting it correctly, but you're more interested in asking original questions than in addressing the the yeah, classic ones. Yeah, when people uh, broke their teeth. Yeah, that's yeah. They, yeah, there is a sportive uh, aspect of mathematics to solve old questions, but I'm, I'm not driven by it at all. Yeah. That's a good way to end. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.